Hi, my name is Rosa Owens and I'm one of the four students that's going to be talking to you today um, about a presentation um, that you're going to be sitting uh, to help us out for one of our projects uh, for us to get our degree as a registered nurse. So I do appreciate you today. Um, I'm going to uh, let you take a start out with a pretest, and that'll just take you just a few minutes. Okay, so um, I'm gonna start out talking to you about colorectal cancer. So a lot of people's heard of cancer, but I'm gonna tell you exactly what it is. And it, it's basically a disease caused by cells that are not normal and that can spread to one or many parts of the body. So when someone has cancer, it can be anywhere in the body. Now, we're talking today about colorectal cancer. So how does colon cancer start? Well, most colorectal cancer start as a growth on the inner lining of the colon or rectum. These growths are called polyps. Some types of polyps can change into cancer over time, usually many years, but not all polyps become cancer. So, what is the second leading cause of cancer deaths in the U.S.? Well, I'll tell you. Colorectal cancer. Good guess, everybody. So now I'm gonna get over uh, to Heather and she's gonna talk to you a little bit more. Thank you. Hi, how you doing? I'm Heather and I'm gonna talk to you a little bit today. Um, we're gonna move on from the colorectal cancer and uh, we're gonna talk about who is at risk. You want to know who's at risk? Everyone is at risk. If you're sitting in this room here today, you are. In fact, 1 in 23 men develop colorectal cancer, and 1 in 25 women will be diagnosed with colorectal cancer. That's 4%, which doesn't seem like a lot, but that is a lot of folks. Your signs and symptoms of colorectal cancer, I want you to see here, this one here is the most important one that you need to be aware of, and that is that there are little to no early warning signs. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about prevention later. That'll tell you how to mitigate that. But we're gonna start, um, if you start to see blood in your stool, which would be a bowel movement or diarrhea, constipation, or if your uh, bowel movements are thinner than usual, all of these can be a symptom uh, that something is going on with you. You have frequent gas pains, aches, bloating, or cramps that don't go away. Uh, it's not like you just ate too much at dinner, okay? Losing weight, and you don't know why. I mean, we all want to lose some weight usually, but uh, it would be more than you'd like. Then throwing up for no reason and feeling more tired than usual. Okay. Your risk factors. There are several risk factors. Uh, the older we get, the more risk we have. Uh, so, 90% of people who get colon cancer are over 50, and 1 in 10 people are under 50. So, then as we age, we develop polyps, and we're far more likely to grow colon polyps, or abnormal growths. And what they do is they go in and they cut the polyps out, and if they found those, they may risk, they may lower the risk of getting colon cancer. If you have a family history of colon cancer, that puts you at increased risk. If you eat a diet that's high in fat and low in fiber, uh, as well as low in calcium, you eat a lot of red meat, all of those things, that can increase your risk for developing colorectal cancer. And if you're a smoker, smoking kills everything, guys. I'm just here to tell you. Um, heavy alcohol use, if you're inactive, and if you're overweight and obese, those are huge factors. Um, I'm gonna step aside now and Tim's gonna come and he's gonna tell you a little bit more about why all this is happening. So, you all know me, uh, why is this happening? Colon cancer is suggested that this is because there is a lack of access to the healthcare and lack of awareness in both patients under age 50. Some of the testing, as many of the screens are available, which is the right one. Most screens are covered by insurance, affordable, take home options, color guard. 60% um, of all the deaths can be prevented 
for screening and uh, one into three are not up to date with their colon screenings. So that's a big thing is um, get the word out. CDC uh, screens for life, natural colon cancer action campaign informs people about the importance of colorectal cancer. Screenings begin at age 45. It covers most of everybody in this room. Since 1999, the CDC has conducted more than 225 focus groups in 35 U.S. cities to access the knowledge and behaviors and screening practices related to colorectal or chlor yeah, whatever, cancer, and to test campaigns and to um, campaign messages and materials with target audiences. Say that loud. Well. And so, in 2005, Screen for Life began a partnership with the Entertainment Industrial Foundation. The National Colon Cancer Research Alliance, external, co-founded by Katie Curie, to, ooh, Katie Curie, that's nice, uh, to create public service announcements with celebrities. And so I'm gonna introduce you to my fellow student, is Christine. Hi guys, I'm Christina. So how you can help absolutely get the word out. I'm gonna to talk to you about how we prevent and all these lovely screenings. So with colorectal cancer, almost half are actually preventable. So you, like there's modifiable factors, as in staying healthy, watching your weight throughout your life, you need to move, fiber rich foods, which are highly important. You need to limit your red meat. I mean, we all like a good steak, but hey, you gotta watch what you're doing with it. You gotta watch your alcohol intake. It can be symptomatic or asymptomatic, and that's the issue with the asymptomatic because it is a silent killer. And then we're gonna move on to the diagnostic testing, which starts, these tests, you have to actually do in possibly a surgery center disease, you have to be put to sleep for. You have your flexible sigmoidoscopy, which only does part of the colon and the rectum with a sigmoscope, and it protects your abnormal tissue. The doctor will only be able to see about half of the colon during this procedure, so because it's only about two, two feet long is the sigmoidoscope. So colonoscopy, this examines the entire length of the colon and the rectum for these abnormal tissues. So you can see all of it with that. Now the double contrasparium enema is a type of x-ray test that looks at your colon and your rectum. And that one, pretty sure, because it's a 2D pictures, instead of your 3D that different tests can actually look at. Now your CT colonograph, you're actually gonna have those 3D pictures and multiple of them instead of with the double contrast barium, you're only gonna have your 2D pictures. Now all of these tests can look for colorectal polyps and cancer, but some, they're actually some that you can actually do at home. We're gonna talk about those next. Now these, like I said, are the ones that you actually do at home, and these are actually advised to do yearly with certain age groups. Now you have your fecal occult blood test, which occult means that's hidden blood in your feces, which is your stool. So this test can be actually done at home. They all, they all give you information on how you do it. The fecal immunochemical test, it's a newer test, and it also finds the hidden occult blood but this, this actual test, it reacts to the human hemoglobin protein that's found in the red blood cells. Then you have your stool DNA test, but unfortunately, this one won't actually apply to us because it's not available in the US anymore. And these tests actually look for signs for the colorectal cancer, much less invasive, can be done at home. They're not as accurate as the more invasive procedures, but they can help you get predetermined to go have your more invasive testing. Now, prevention, you should begin at age 45. If you, if you don't have symptoms, should you still get screened? Absolutely, absolutely. Now, the summary is colon cancer is a silent killer. The risk of developing this cancer can decrease with these screenings and adopting a healthy lifestyle. So the fried foods and all the yucky stuff that we're not supposed to have, don't do it. Try to eat your dry leafy greens and all that fun stuff. Thanks, guys. All right, thanks again for um, sitting with Tim for this, and us for this presentation. Um, so that is the end. We hope you all have learned something, and we're going to find out because now you're going to do a post-test. Ha-ha, surprise!
Have a great day, guys. Thank you.